Okay, so first we're gonna do a two talk before the 10 talk. So um, I got a few, few people like the, uh, the iPad thing that I did yesterday, and I'm honestly kind of amazed that more people don't do it because it's so easy and it works so well. I just wanna walk you through a couple of the tricks that I use when I'm presenting to use the iPad for presentation. So first, we start out in, uh, in Keynote. So the first thing we need to do is set up a Keynote remote. It's actually super, super easy. You just go up here to uh, Preferences, and then in Preferences, go to Remotes, and then it's super easy to add it right here. However, one word of warning. Has anybody fired up a Spectrum Analyzer in here and looked at what it looked like? What's it like in here? 2.4 gigahertz is a mess, right? Uh, and so by default, if you have this paired with uh, Bluetooth, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to use Bluetooth and you're going to have a bad time, right? So be careful about that. What I actually used is I turned off Bluetooth, so you can see that Bluetooth is just turned off there, so it's not a problem, and it actually goes to Wi-Fi. And, and I just used the conference Wi-Fi yesterday, so client isolation isn't enabled there, so they could see each other and it worked pretty much flawlessly. Test it while you're, while you're in the audience before you come on stage. I tested it for like an hour to make sure it was all gonna work, and it did. So the second part of it is over on the iPad. I've never actually plugged this in before. This iPad has never been, uh, never been connected to a projector. Oh no, that's the wrong one. You can't plug USB-C into a lightning port. Oh, somebody, didn't, somebody was supposed to laugh. Mitch didn't even laugh. <laughs> Thanks. Oh man. Had a bunch of coffee, so I'm all jittery. Okay, so on the iPad, uh, the next piece of this, there we go. Next piece of this is in Keynote on the iPad. So um, basically, when you, uh, when you fire up Keynote, let me back out of this presentation, and to be honest, I don't really know, like I'm not an iOS guy, I use Android mostly, so you'll notice that up here in the corner, there is this Keynote remote thing. So if I hit play, now, now you can't see my laptop screen, but now it's looking at the filtering and coloring frames with Wireshark. So you can swipe over here to see you know, which slides are coming up, and most importantly, you can go up here to the upper right-hand corner and you can draw on this. So it's pretty much what you would expect. There's a little bit of a delay when you're using Bluetooth, but with five gigahertz Wi-Fi, it's pretty quick. If you long press the back button, you can hit clear all, and of course, you can hit the next arrow to move on to the next one. So you notice I walk around up here. I hate being tied to my laptop, and so this enables me to move around, and I, I feel like that kind of helps out with, uh, with engagement. So. And also, turn notifications off so that Mitch doesn't sit there. <laughs> the, the whole presentation, actually, yesterday, they're like, blah, 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 and I'm like swiping up, and it's, yeah, it was pretty great, so thanks for that, guys. So, all right, we're gonna put the iPad away, and I'm gonna show you one more thing before we move on here. Um, the last thing that I wanna show is Zoom controls in Mac OS. I like to present from Mac primarily because of this. You guys may have noticed that I like to zoom in and click on stuff, so that way you in the back, if you're sitting in the middle here on these screens, you can actually see what I'm doing. So here's, uh, here's how to do it. So basically, uh, just go to uh, Preferences, and then go to Accessibility. Just the easy way, or maybe not the easy way. Go to Accessibility, and then uh, go to Zoom, and then this is what you want right here. You want use uh, scroll gesture for modifier keys to zoom. So basically, I just hold down control and two finger scroll in and out. That's it, that's all you do. Uh, one last tip too, if you end up using GoToMeeting for presentations all the time, did I close Keynote? No, I just minimized it or something. Uh, if you use GoToMeeting, uh, I like to do two displays in GoToMeeting when I'm teaching webinars and giving demos and things like that for Ekahal. I use the annotations tool like crazy. I like to draw all over my slide. You get pretty good at using the mouse for drawing stick figures and stuff, right? So use that, take advantage of that if you're ever presenting with, uh, with GoToMeeting. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about filtering and coloring frames with Wireshark. Uh, so this is where the actual 10 talk begins. Did I keep it under two minutes? Probably not, but whatever. So filtering and coloring frames with Wireshark, uh, I feel is, is pretty important because when you look at Wireshark, you basically get this giant wall of packets. And it's really hard for me to look at that and pick the pieces of information out there and see what's going on, to see those conversations happening back and forth. Now, for a long time, 
uh, it really, this really scared me. Using Wireshark and, and, and coming up with regular expressions and things like that really scared me because I thought that you just had to memorize all these. I thought you just had to, to know all these expressions and know exactly what to type in the filter bar. Turns out that is not true. Just like Brian showed you with Ekahow where you can go in and generate tags, you can basically do the same thing with Wireshark. So let's walk through that really quick. Now, uh, a couple of quick things to know is first are operators. With operators, you can basically take two regular expressions and put them together to do various things. Like for example, if you want to show, uh, let's say that you want to show all of the data frames that have retries, then you just, you know, use data frames and and retries and it'll mash those two together and it'll only show it if both of those things are present in the frame. Uh, and then equal equal is if it's this and then bang equal is if it isn't this. Um, also, there are three ways to basically apply filters in Ekahow. If you right click on a, something in a frame and hit apply as filter, it puts it up in the filter bar and hits apply. It just applies it right away. If you hit prepare as filter, and it puts the thing in the filter bar, but it doesn't hit apply. So that's nice, you can put it up there and then work on it a little bit more before you apply it. And then finally, if you use colorize with filter, then it's gonna take you to the coloring rules window so you can do that. So with that, let's go ahead and, and, see, uh, and see how to do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a packet capture real quick. So I'm just gonna disassociate from the Wi-Fi. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll grab something on channel six because it's usually fairly interesting. So eh, 9,000 frames, that should be enough for us to do what we're gonna do. So now Airtool is gonna open up uh, Wireshark automatically because I configured it to do that. Thanks, Adrian, it's really convenient. So now what we need to do is let's apply some basic colors here to make this easier to read. I'm gonna apply some filters at the frame type level. We're not gonna go down to the subframe level yet. We're just gonna apply them at the frame type. Management frames, control frames, and data frames. Hopefully you remember that from yesterday. So let's start with, uh, I don't know, let's start with something pretty easy. Let's go with a, a clear to send. And so if I right click on this, when I right click on that, I can come down here to, uh, well, hang on. So if I right click on that, we're gonna bring up this bar down here, make a little bit more space. And I'm gonna come down here to the IEEE 802.11 information. Now there's a, couple, there's a couple of information elements that you can see here. First is we can see the, the subtype is clear to send. We're not gonna to touch that one yet. Instead, we're gonna go in here to the frame control field and we can see that this is just a, a control frame. So we'll right click on it and then hit colorize with filter and then we'll hit new coloring rule. That's gonna open up the coloring rules window. So this is where we can basically define everything that we need to about this rule. So we'll call this one a control frame. And we can see that the regular expression has already been applied there. We don't have to worry about remembering that. It's there already. See how we, I didn't have to type in anything. So now let's go ahead and apply color. So I'm gonna change the foreground to, uh, to white or snow as Apple calls it. And then we'll change uh, the background to tangerine so we get a nice orange color there. And so there we go. Now all, of our, uh, now all of our control frames are orange. We just narrowed down a ton instantly, right? So the next thing that we need to do is let's find a data frame. So right below here, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid of all the upper layer data in my capture file just to kind of clean it up a little bit and keep the file size small. But this we can see is a data frame. So I'm gonna right click on that. Go to colorize a filter, hit new coloring rule, and we'll call it a data frame. And let's make this one, we'll select it. Let's make the foreground white. I hate to have to do that every single time. Let's make the background blue. And there we go. Now we've got all of our colors for all of our data frames. All that leaves now is, uh, all that leaves now is, uh, is our management frame. So I'm gonna go down here. We've got it selected up here. We'll select management frame down here. This specifically is an action frame. So something really interesting is going on there. So we'll uh, go to colorize with filter, go to new coloring rule. And this one, we'll just call it a management frame. Spelling is hard when you're on stage in front of a couple hundred people. We'll change the, the foreground to white, the background to, there was a really nice purple here, grape. We'll go with grape. Reminds me of my Game Boy colors. Okay, so now we've got all of our different frames all colored here, so let's go find a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uh, yeah, there we go. There's a nice mix of different colors there. So we can see all of our, uh, all of our different management frames. 
Okay, so uh, now we've got all those basic colors applied, but what if we want to apply slightly different colors for each different type of frame? Maybe we want to take a, a clear to send and we want to give it a slightly different hue. Well, instead of just a, applying a control frame, I'm going to come up here to the subtype field and right click that and go to colorize with filter. And we'll call this, this is a clear to send, so we'll call this the Roel and Francois frame. <laughs> And let's give that, let's see, once again, white background. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna select orange here, but I'm gonna go grab just kind of a slightly different hue of orange there. We'll brighten it up just a little bit. And that might be hard to see on the projector, but on my screen it looks fabulous. That is now a slightly different color. So you can do that for pretty much all the frame types if you want to. You could go through every single frame type and that can help kind of, kind of help you understand a little bit more about what's going on. If we go up to the view menu and come down to coloring rules, then uh, notice that these are ordered in a specific way. That is really important. The ones that are on top get applied first. So you want to put the important ones up above. Okay, so let's have a little bit, uh, a little bit more fun with this. So let's say uh, that we want to call out uh, the difference between uh, retries and, uh, and just, you know, just first attempt frames. So what I'm going to do is we need to find, uh, we need to find one that is, uh, that is a retry in here somewhere. So I'm just going to look over here in the info and so, okay, there's got to be a retry in here somewhere. Now, this is, where, this is where things start to break down a little bit for me, because if I, if I did have these memorized, it'd be really easy for me to find one. I'm going to go actually look at my cheat sheet really quick here. I had retries in here, I'm pretty sure. There we go. WLAN FC retry equals one. Usually, I can spot them. but So I'm going to apply that one up here in the filter bar. So we've just now filtered down to all the retries. If I click on this, another way we could find that is if we looked inside the frame, and we came up here to the radio tap header. Is it the radio tap header? No, 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 I was already there. Right where we were already, if we look at the flags, we can see that right now it is retry. Frame is being retransmitted. The easier way that I could have done this is I could have just come into a, a frame that isn't a retry and then right click this and hit uh, prepare as filter. That puts it up here in the top. If it wasn't a retry, what would it have been? A zero, right? And all we do is change it to a one and that's a retry, right? Really, really easy to do. So let's grab our retry and I'm going to go back to my coloring rules and let's create a brand new coloring rule and let's call this one data frame and then I'm going to add retry here. So then we'll go ahead and, and, and put the retry in there, but we also need to tell it that it's a data frame. So I'm going to steal I'm going to steal, steal that from here, and we'll add that up here, and we are going to, we're, going to bind these, uh, uh, we're going to bind these two together with that Boolean operator that we looked at earlier. So now we're saying, okay, if it's a data frame and it's a retry, then we're going to say it's a data frame and then call it a retry. So let's give it a color real quick. So we'll give the foreground that. We'll give the background blue. Okay, and I'm going to just put it right here, right above data frame to keep things nice and clean. Okay, that's nice, but we have the exact same color for everything. That doesn't change anything at all. Let's hack Wireshark a little bit. Let's add a new column here that will show what the frame type is and if it's a retry. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go find, uh, let's go find one of these that is being retransmitted. Uh, actually, more specifically, I'm going to come under the frame, the very top one, and I'm going to come down here to coloring rule name. See how we've got the name of our coloring rule here? I'm going to right click on that, and uh, we are going to apply this as a column. So now we've got this column that shows us our nice and neat, uh, our nice and neat frame names, as well as it says retry if it's actually a retry. So that column is not designed at all to show us what type of frame it is and, what the re what, and whether it's a retry or not, but we can basically bend it to our will to turn it into a completely custom, uh, a completely custom one. So I can also uh, edit this column and we can change it up here. So, so this is our coloring rule name column. We can change this to frame type. Whoops, if I could type. And uh, hit OK, and so there we go. Now we have a nice and neat and clean uh, column. Some other things I would show you if we had more than 10 minutes is uh, also uh, you can add buttons up here. So basically, if you want to show, uh, if you want to show a specific frame type, like, uh, like this is a data frame type, we can actually, uh, we can actually add this as a, a filter and we can give it, you know, we could call this data frames. 
So we've given it the label data frames, we've given it the, the filter from our data frame that we grabbed earlier. We hit OK. Now we get a button up here. If we hit that, bam, we're only looking at data frames. So you can use that to filter out bad frames. You could use that to only show data frames or management frames or control frames or just about anything, anything you want just by going and looking in the packet and right-clicking prepare as filter and taking it up there to the top. Now, if you want something that's, uh, that's already completed, uh, over uh, the Medigeek guys already have a really nice uh, color profile that is ready to go. This one's got all the buttons built in. It's got the, uh, the frame type hack is there. It'll even show bad and malformed frames, and it'll show uh, EAP exchanges and things like that. And you can find, you can find that, uh, that file right here. If you don't have time to write it down, uh, look at the uh, MedGeek Twitter stream and look at, my, and look at uh, my Twitter, and you will see that link right there, and you can click on it and go get it. So, all right, that's it. Thank you very much.